Okay, so this final example that we're going to show is kind of talking about these downloadable installation scripts and how they might be hijacked to install rogue malicious software. And then also we'll talk about how Falco can detect it. So here's kind of like the uh, setup for the hypothetical um, uh, scenario that we're talking about. So in the upper right, we have some components um, set up by the software vendor. So um, let's say they've got install software.sh sitting on some file system somewhere. They've got some web servers like Apache where they're using to serve the software and these installation scripts. But in front of it, let's say they have something like Nginx acting as a re uh, reverse proxy. So this is really common. People use Nginx for things like SSL termination. They use it for load balancing, maybe caching of static content like images. So it's really common to see you know, web servers with reverse proxies in front of them. Um, so in this hypothetical example, um, there's also an attacker out there. So they're running um, an evil Apache, like you know their version of Apache where they've got um, some malicious software set up to send to people. And let's say they're running a botnet. So they've got like a command and control machine um, as well that's sitting there trying to find new um, clients to add to its botnet. So in this case, let, let's say the attacker um, got into that Nginx box. So that's why I co colored it orange. Um, so if they get into this Nginx machine, um, they have the ability to kind of change the contents of this installation script on the fly as it's being downloaded to the client. Oh yeah, so the, the client's the box on the left, so it's running curl, uh, install software, pipe to bash. Um, you know, it's probably running it as root because that's how you install your software. But that's incredibly um, attractive to the attacker because they can basically install and run arbitrary software on the client as root. So that's a horrible, horrible situation to be in. Um, and then on the client, we'll also have Falco running, so we can use it to detect, to detect this activity. So um, if the attacker can get into the Nginx um, machine, they can change this script on the fly as it's being download to, downloaded to the client. And that's especially, especially tricky to detect because um, there's really there's no like copy of the software the there's no copy of the installation script that you can look at to see that it's been modified. It's only being modified in flight between the software the server and the client. So it's especially tricky. So you might be wondering how do you actually write Nginx to do that? So let me show you. So here is how you do it. Um, you, you may or may not be familiar with Nginx configuration, but th this line here with the subfilter is the important piece. So it's saying, I'm going to take the piece of the script that has this install dev line, and I'm going to replace it with more stuff. I'm going to say, also download this script called botnet client.py from, um, in this case, it's localhost, but this is the evil Apache server, and I'm going to run it. Um, this is running as root now because you ran the installation script as root. So now the attacker has basically got a Python script running on your machine as root. Um, so goodness knows what they can uh, do at that point. Okay, so now that we've set it up, let's kind of, oh, actually, let's keep this. Um, let's kind of go through the steps of watching what happens. Um, like I said, this is also available on our GitHub. It's all available, all runnable via Docker Compose if you want to run it as well. So it's just starting up everything. Um, like before, Falco's building the kernel module and linking it to the kernel, the version of the kernel. So if we look uh, at Docker PS to see what's actually running, we've got um, the, the Apache instance, which is the one run by the software vendor. We've got the Nginx instance um, owned by the software vendor, but um, compromised by the attacker. We've got the evil Apache, that's going to be the one serving the Python script. And we've got this um, botnet master, which is probing into the client machine, try to see, trying to get in. Um, in the output up here, we've got in this attacker botnet master line, this is basically that software trying to get in. Okay, so now let's, 
Okay, so let's um, try to install this software and see what happens when we do that. Okay, so a few things happened. In the bottom, um, the installation script was downloaded and run totally fine. Um, don't worry about the root thing, that's not important. But you know, as far as you know, it, the script worked just fine. But a few things changed in the top screen. So let me just take a, we'll look at this. So the, if you look at the Apache instance, it served out the legitimate copy of the installation script. Um, so did Nginx, but it was modified on the fly due to those rewrite rules that I showed you. Also, the evil Apache instance, it served out a copy of the botnet client script. So that's evidence that um, this is running on the client. And then also in this, the, the botnet master output, it changed. So it actually can reach the client machine now and it's sending it, you know, fake commands in this case we're saying, go DDoS some IP address and do bad things. And um, let's look to see what's running on the client machine. Hey, there's this uh, botnet client Python script. Where did that come from? I've never heard of that, but it's running now just as a side effect of running this installation script. And if you, if I tell that to localhost, hey, the Python script, um, it's running a little uh, network server and hey, it's waiting for command and control commands. So this is pretty horrible, right? You thought you were installing um, some piece of software and now you've got this rogue Python script running on your machine with a network server waiting for connections from someone. So that's a pretty horrible place to be in. Okay, so um, let's kind of uh, talk a little bit about how Falco would detect this activity. Let me just get everything started from scratch. Okay, so, um, yeah, I don't need to show the script. Um, the basic idea that we have in Falco is, um, we're gonna use this idea of um, process sessions, which is basically a way to um, group processes together. And what we're gonna say is, um, if we can find a way to isolate all of the programs that are running as a part of this installation session, then we can that as a kind of like a policy scope to, a, to a, a scope upon which we can apply rules. And we can say, during an installation session, only certain activities are allowed. Um, and we have rules in the Falco rules file that do exactly that. So let me just show um, a couple examples of them. Okay, so here's one of the rules that we use. So um, what, what this says is um, this proc.sname, this is the important thing. Um, we're gonna basically run everything under a different installation program called fbash, which is basically Falco safe bash. And the thing that that program does is it creates a new um, session group that basically takes all of the things that are running as a part of this installation process and groups them all together. And what the Falco rule does with that is says, okay, if you're in one of these sessions related to FBash, you can't start a network server because that's not something you would reasonably, reasonably expect to see as a part of installing software. Um, and here's the rule for that. Um, another thing you might see happening is, um, so, you see malware often connecting to things like IRC servers and so forth and connecting on crazy ports. So another thing you can do is you can say, if you're in one of these um, FBash sessions, there really shouldn't be anything making outgoing connections on ports other than HTTP. You know, you would expect the download to happen for downloading RPMs or something, but you shouldn't expect to see somebody connecting over IRC ports or crazy ports or anything like that. So we have a rule for that in the Falco rules file as well that says if you're in one of these FBash sessions and you make an outbound network connection and it's not one of the ports you expect to see, then that's suspicious activity that you should send an alert for. Okay, so now let's, um, wait, did I everything? No, yeah. Let's start up everything again and we'll kind of go through the same steps, but instead of running it through bash, we're gonna run it through FBash. 
and we'll see how that allows Falco to detect the suspicious activity and send alerts based on it. Get in the right directory. Okay, so and we've got everything started again. We've got the good web server, the evil web server, and everything. Um, so the difference here is that we're going to run things through fbash instead of bash. Um, and we'll see what the different behavior is now. Okay, so in the bottom, everything was the same. So um, you ran the installation script. Um, the botnet client is still running as a result of doing the installation script, and the uh, kind of the attacker can get through. But there's some other things that happened. If we look at the Falco output, it sent a bunch of new alerts. It said, okay, I saw an outgoing um, connection on a non-HTTP port because remember we said that, um, well, in this case it was downloading it from the evil web server which is running on a non-standard port, but, um, so that one's interesting. But the one that's really interesting is this one about the listen call. So it said, hey, I noticed that that Python script um, started up a network server and we don't reasonably expect um, things in an installation session to start up network servers. So Falco detected that activity and sent an alert based on it. Um, so, you know, getting back to that home security analogy, this didn't prevent the intrusion, but it absolutely detected it. So it gives you kind of a safer way to um, detect that an intrusion incurred. It gives you kind of a safer way to um, do these kind of all-in-one downloadable installation scripts even in a case where somebody was able to change the contents on the fly. Um, 